One day I'm going to do an intro where I don't stutter. And I'm going to be fucking creaming myself. But today is not that damn day. Good morning, guys. How the hell are you doing? You're looking absolutely splendid on this wonderful Sunday. Although it won't be a Sunday when I upload this. Unless it takes me a whole fucking week to edit like the last one did. Because of all the shit I had to do. Fingers crossed you enjoyed that last video. And you know, you know what? I'm not even going to say fingers crossed anymore. I know you did because my content's incredible. And if you think otherwise, then go suck your mum. Don't suck your mum, that would be gross. Leave that to me. On the menu for today, I actually have a rest day and I'm off to work. But obviously, it wouldn't be, you know, a YouTube video of Natty Bodybuilder if there wasn't some training footage. So I am going to show you my trip up to Ultraflex Durham the other day, the first time I've actually been. Uh, it was pretty good. But before we do any of that, I'm going to go do some other stuff and you guys are going to watch the intro. So yeah. You enjoy that. <sighs> Shit, that's hot. Mm. But what did I expect? I only just made that. Breakfast for today, oats. Protein powder, peanut butter, and an apple. I have no idea off the top of my head what the macros are, but I know that they'll be popping up on the screen somewhere there. Don't worry, I'm not going to take you through another day of eating because you guys already, already watch one. Yeah, before we get started with the day, I thought I'd give you guys a little bit of a life update. I decided to drop out of uni rather than going back just because... I, I, I really enjoy my course, but I don't see myself getting any further with it in terms of I don't see it being something I want to do for the rest of my life. I love what learning languages. You guys know I'm fluent in Spanish because I am Spanish, but I don't see German being particularly useful. And as for linguistics, unless I wanted to teach linguistics, again, not something I see being particularly useful. But I had some really good news on Friday. Uh, I actually passed my police assessment. So all of the, all the online stuff that I did uh, went through well and I you know, got good results. So I'm on to the final stage now, which is an in-person interview and just all the uh, the checks that they do, physical, medical, and background. So yeah, I've also gone full-time at Ultraflex as an employee there now as well. So that's been good. I'm tired quite a bit, but, you know, training's been good. As for this first week with Jake, I had my first check-in on Friday. I'm going to throw up a posing video over this, so I'll just bring that down. Uh, it was pretty good. Unfortunately, I did drop a little bit of weight, which obviously isn't the idea in, in the off-season, so I imagine that means food's going to be uh, food's gonna be pushed up. I went from, I was 101-ish at the start of the week to 100.4, I believe, on check-in day, or 100.6, I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm assuming that food will go up. Uh, my expenditure wasn't much higher than it usually is. I think I've averaged at around eight to 9,000 steps per day. My sleep's been a lot more consistent this week, which is good. Uh, like my sleep quality is always pretty fine. I sleep like a log usually, but it's I've been getting more hours because I've been like trying to get more hours because I know that's what I need to do. Because you're ashamed to tell them that actually yeah I stayed up until four a.m. watching anime porn uh, and I only got three hours of sleep as a result of that. <laughs> Don't worry guys, I didn't actually stay up until four a.m. watching anime porn. I think that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to go over on in regards to that. I'm gonna eat this. And, yeah, get myself dressed and sorted. And then see you guys at the gym for work. I don't know. I don't know how this video is going to pan out. We'll see. Oh, the excitement, the nerves, who knows. See you guys at the gym. Ah, so, oh, I've decided what I'm going to do. I've got about two hours before I start work. So I am quickly going to nip to CEX and sell my old Xbox because I literally haven't used it since lockdown ended. And that is the doorbell ringing. So let's go find out what that's about. Hey man, how's it going? Hello, how are you? Good, thank you, how about you? I have a problem. Yeah? But here, no problem. So what's happening there is <laughs> is that focus? No, it's not, is it? There we go. 
uh, I ordered a green screen and like softbox lights and stuff like that so I can do some like photo shoot stuff um, and interview style recording uh, but like, apparently the address is wrong and he's not sure if it is my house or if it is me but if it is I know it is I don't know I don't think I'm going to have time to unbox this right now so I think we'll just unbox it when I get back from work we need to get going because otherwise I'm just not going to have time to do any of this stuff. So I'll see you guys wherever the hell I see you. I don't know. We'll work it out. <laughs> and that is the Xbox traded in. I traded it in for store credit because they actually sell gimbals, which is the next thing I wanted to buy for my camera. Because if you can't tell currently, I'm a little bit fucking shaky. Like, I don't know what's wrong with it. I've just never had particularly stable hands. So a gimbal would be pretty useful for obviously recording everything and any sort of like uh, actual video work I wanted to do for clients. Like I, I've been doing video work for, for somebody at the gym lately and uh, yeah, I feel like I could sort of step things up a little bit. I don't want to do it professionally because as you guys know, I want to go into the police. But I'd just like to be able to do things better and make things look good. I'm a little bit, I, I won't say I'm not a perfectionist, but the things that I enjoy doing, I love to put 100% in. That, in fact, no, I, I don't love to do it. That's what I do. I put 100% effort into. I don't half ass things. I, I'm not very good at that. I really, I really should stop spending money, but you know, your boy's a baller. <laughs> right, onto the gym now. Yeah. Had my first hiccup of the day, got here early, started unpacking things, and I fucking realized as I've gone to prep my food, I didn't bring any fucking rice pouches, so all I've got for the day is just chicken and veg and apples. Obviously not ideal when that would mean that I'd have something like fucking 300 and something carb street when I got home after my shift. Not good. So I messaged the fam to see if they'd, they'll bring it for me, and I'm just waiting on a reply from them. Fingers crossed they will. I mean, I am their favourite child, so you'd expect them to. But yeah. Fingers crossed they'll bring them. Big ups to the father for bringing me those. Thank fuck. Damn. I would have been a hungry ass boy for the rest of the day otherwise. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm make a meal and then do other stuff, I guess. You know, do do work things because I work. <laughs> a little over halfway through the shift now. Something else I thought I'd mention. So I just pick up like a, a journal, diary thing. Just, oh Jesus, that was not a good idea. Just because, obviously I have my iPad that I edit on and my phone and everything like that to keep track of things. But there's just something about writing things down on a piece of paper that just makes you remember them better. Like there's actual science about that, isn't there? Like there's genuine sort of studies done that show that when you write things down on, on paper, you know, you, you remember better. But I also find like, you know, my phone's in my pocket. I get it out, I add something in quickly and I forget. The, you know this this journal this diary whatever i is that it's a whole sort of like ordeal getting out writing in it and you know it's just more likely to make me re remember and stay organized and get on top of things because i don't know if i mentioned to you guys before but i am a the king of procrastination and b a fucking mess when it comes to organization my god i should wonder i've got this far in life oh i haven't got that far in life i'm 20 aren't i so it is what it is. But yeah. Book. You can track your training in it, track your life, whatever. Track everything, all the variables. And that's the end of the damn shift. Obviously for you guys that was just like a few seconds. But for me that was six hours. Woohoo! Six hours of my life that I was paid for and that I enjoyed because I love working in this gym. I hope my bosses watch that. <laughs> I think we're gonna go through my training session at Durham the other day now. So I just like skip myself and like you should be seeing the fucking footage around me. First off, gotta say Durham is a very, very good gym. I prefer Hull because Hull's bigger, but Durham is very, very good. It was shoulders and triceps, uh, so penultimate session of the week. Started off with cuffed lateral raises. Uh, pretty decent, not really much to say, you guys know. I like cuff lateral raises because I did them before Jay programmed me. Um, yeah, I think it was like a top set of 17 and then a back off of 13 or something like that. 
nothing amazing, just getting you know blood in the shoulder, getting it working, getting some work done. You know the vibes. Somebody's left a bag here. Dibs. <laughs> Following on from those cup laterals, we moved on to a chest press. Now I really, really wanted to use the hoist chest press that they've got at Durham, but I was programmed for incline, so I wasn't allowed to use that. So instead I used the Nautilus press that was next to it, uh, and that shit hurt my ego. I tried to do my top set, which was meant to be like seven to 12, and I got fucking five. Oh no, not, the top set was meant to be nine to 15, and I got five. RIP me. That was with three plates aside. And then a back off of two plates aside for 14, which was, you know, all right. Again, it, like that piece of kit feels really, really nice. I just really wanted to use that fucking hoist, hoist machine. What came after that? <laughs> yeah, so following on from the chest press, moved into some high incline Smith machine press. So basically a shoulder press, but with the Smith machine. Really not much to say. There was two sets of nine to 15. I just used two plates aside. So 80 kilos as the sort of base weight there. Um, yeah, I think I did like a set of 12 and a set of nine or something like that. Ballpark figure really. Felt good, nothing special. You know, something I could have done at this altar actually, but you know, it was worth the trip. Uh, <laughs> Then we moved on to some more cuff laterals. I think it was just a lower rep range this time. No, no, it was just two straight sets of 12 to 20 actually this time. Pretty good, you know, just further, furthering that pump. Not much to say there. So the first tricep exercise was, oh, what the fuck was the first tricep exercise? Yeah, the first tricep exercise was just a standard extension with a rope. They didn't have a very long rope or sort of the rope that I use when I'm at, uh, you know, here, hull. So I just, you know, attach two ropes together. It means I can just get slightly wider on both. Oh, you guys can't fucking see that, can you? Slightly wider. So instead of coming like to there, I'm coming to there. You definitely didn't see that, but whatever. <laughs> Following on from those, it was a dip machine. Now, usually... I'd use a plate loaded dip machine, which actually I don't really like. So I would actually usually do just straight dips with weights, with, with a weight around my waist. But they have a prime dip machine that's pin loaded and it feels so good. The only issue being that I'm too fucking strong for it. So I had it loaded. I, I, I had the full stack on and I did like two sets of 15 pretty comfortably, to be honest. But yeah, following on from those, or to finish off even, I had cable skull crushers, which we did in the first session of the week. Nothing, I didn't even, actually I was well below the numbers I hit in that session, like by a fair few reps. So I don't know what happened there, probably just tired, fatigued. I mean, it was like my third, third tricep movement and second time training them in the week. But yeah, all around pretty good session. No complaints there. Um, I don't see myself going back up to Durham anytime soon. Long way to just, go. Just because when, it's a two-hour you know, drive, I've really. It's a, it's a pull, little, well, two and a bit hour. Is the best little flex. Um, so or Rotherham, which I'll be doing all my leg sessions at anyway, and that's only an hour away. I'd like to get a leg session in there because they've got some cool leg kit, and that hardcore corner does look very cool. But we'll see. Anyways, on to the next portion of this video, which is going to be discussing meal prep and how to make it simple during an off season. So I was about to go home and then I remembered that I actually have a meal to eat before before going home and doing my meal prep and stuff. So I'll eat this real quick and then head home. Something worth mentioning actually. So I've gone over you know, ch my check-ins and stuff this week. I actually, whilst I was on shift, had the feedback for this week from my coach back. Uh, and like I said, Pretty, well, I was expecting food to go up and it has so I'm going from I believe it was 250 odd grams of protein 70 grams of fat and 450 grams of carbs to my new targets are 560 grams of carbs 240 grams of protein and 60 grams of fat so a little bit down on, on fat and proteins just because I probably don't need that much and up on carbs and I think that brings my calories up 
by 250 or, or something something around that ballpark uh, or just 200 I, I don't know off the top of my head but yeah no complaints there more carbs more goodness yeah I don't know but yeah I'm a, I'm a chow down on this food and then I'll see you guys now I'll see you guys at home I've realised that before we get onto the whole meal prep thing, I still have to unpack this box. So, without further ado, I mean, it's actually not, I already know what it is, I already told you guys what it is, but like, I just want to do it on camera anyway. <laughs> I'm not even going to bother trying to put this all together on camera because I imagine it's going to take me forever. What I'll do is, uh, let's go do the meal prep and once this is sorted I can come back and do something in front of it, I don't know, yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> This is meal prep made easy, essentially. So, some of this stuff I've just brought in to make a point. I'm not actually gonna use it. The only things I'm even gonna cook this evening are gonna be, or well, cook, portion up. I'm gonna be these frozen veg and these British, uh, sorry, these chicken thigh fillets. The rest of the stuff, I have a steak, one for every night, so that's my final meal of the day, every day, and I'll just fry that up in the evening because it takes literally two minutes and then my carb sources for throughout the week are bagels and my microwave pouches of rice so they don't really need portioning out or anything because I'll just take as many bagels or, pou or pouches of rice as I need to anywhere so that's that's sort of like the first thing that I'm going to say in terms of meal prep made easy get things that are already made or portioned out for you it saves you so much effort in I mean it's not cheaper, this probably costs me an extra, yeah, somewhere between 20, 10 and 20 pounds a week extra is what it costs me to, to have pre-portioned things, but it's so much simpler and saves me way more time, and because I'm somebody that procrastinates and is really bad with organisation, that is key. So after we've covered all of those things that are already pre-packaged, or that I'm just going to cook as and when I use them, because they take next to no time, uh, next thing is batch cooking the chicken. Pretty fucking simple, literally just throw it all in here, get it all in the pan, and then just stick it in the oven. And leave it in there for however long that's going to take. So following on from that, I'm going to portion out my veg. Now, I know that I've got two chicken meals a day, and it's seven days in a week, so I need 14 pots. and. I'm pretty certain I don't have 14 here, so just like, bear with me whilst I count that out. There we go, so that's 14 pots, and then I'm just going to pour in around about 160 grams, or 160 to 170 grams of frozen veg, because if you sort of discount uh, the water from the fact that it's frozen, then that comes out to about, about 150 grams. So yeah, I'm going to pour that in each of these. And that's pretty much nearly it's done. I just have to wait for the chicken to finish cooking, divide it up by seven, sorry, by 14, pop it all in here, and we're done. I'm gonna do that. And see you guys when the chicken's cooked. There. So I believe that's the chicken done. I just need to check obviously to make sure because I don't want food poisoning yeah we're all good this one so right, 14 pots and there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 30, 31 oh man I've got to do maths 31 divided by 14 so it's like 2 point uh, I'll need one now. It's like 2.2 of those thingies per pot, but obviously it's just not that deep. 
So long as I'm getting a minimum of 30 grams of protein per meal, then it doesn't really matter so long as the protein throughout the day and throughout the week averages out. So I'm going to just put like two and then in, yeah, just YOLO it really. And there we go, all sorted guys. And that is seven days of two meals a day prepped and you know, all I need to do now is leave the chicken to cool off, put the lids on and stick most of it in the freezer and two days in the fridge. And we good. It's that simple really. You know, you can make this a little bit more complex, like you can cook all your carb sources as well. You know, what I'm doing isn't necessarily ideal, but it's just what allows me to be the most adherent and not burn out. But yeah. And I think that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Done everything I needed to do. Meal prepped, spoke about life, check-ins, changes to food intake. We went through that session at Durham. If you couldn't tell about, yeah, I set up the green screen and then I've got the softbox light pointing at me now. Uh, I think it looks a lot better than, you know, when I've just had my standard lights on. I don't look orange for one, which is a nice bonus. I think I'm gonna end the video here. As always, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Because I've enjoyed making it, if you did enjoy it, which of course you did, obviously, it's been amazing, then do subscribe for more content like this and leave a like to let me know that you enjoyed it. If you didn't enjoy it, then like I said in the last video, go suck your mum. And uh, yeah, follow me on Instagram, send me a DM. What else is there to say? I can't even do like the thingy outro now because you guys are too far away. I'm going to have to throw this user manual at the lens and hope it hits. Alright, I'm going to cross ready. Okay, well, I'm just going to pull the intro.